G'day all, Simon here, Explosive Action, and we are back with a new video. We're going to take a look at my VHS carousel today. Uh, you see it in the background on some of my videos. It's the rotating video stand that uh, has all my best Australian tapes, uh, not the Japanese tapes, they're elsewhere, and it's um, been a feature of my collection for quite some time. I have all my best tapes, best covers, and uh, some of my favourite uh, action movies are definitely in here. So. Let's take a look at the VHS carousel. So we're going to go through this one shelf at a time and at the same time we're going to be listening to the Archaic Tomb demo. And the first uh, VHS that we're staring at right here is my one of my favourites, absolutely. It's called Ghetto Blaster. This is pretty fun, low budget action. Um, definitely worth checking out. I've got here Golden Phoenix with uh, Yahal Murhi and Lauren Avedon, which is a fairly cheap action film, but it's entertaining. Operation Golden Phoenix, that is. Uh, the next one, this is absolutely fantastic. This is Tiger Shark. Awesome cover on this one. I think it was shot in the Philippines, and um, yeah, just absolutely fantastic action. Not on DVD, which is a common theme with pretty much everything here. Uh, now we get on to the David Pryor films. He's one of my favorite action movie directors. The first one here is Kill Zone, which is uh, I think his second film after um, uh, What was it called? I can't remember the name of the horror film. I'll put it down here um, But anyway Kill Zone, yeah pretty good one with Ted Pryor and uh, Sort of a missing in action kind of film really good fun the classic absolutely monumental deadly prey one of my top five films of all time. No irony intended. This is a fantastic low budget action film. Shows you what you can do with not much money. Uh, Operation Warzone, which one's pretty good as well. Um, I've only seen this one the once, I don't remember too much about it. Night Wars, another pretty fun one with uh, Dan Haggerty, which is a, just a laugh itself, so there you go. Um, and uh, Brian O'Connor and Cameron Smith, fun film. This one's called Chase, and uh, that's a pretty good explosion there on the front, and a giant, giant explosion out of the uh, shotgun there, and there's a pram. I mean, it's got everything you want, and yeah, lots and lots of denim. Uh, Chase is good fun. Uh, this one, Rapid Fire, love this one, and look at this dude, and he looks unimpressed. The ultimate weapon has arrived. This one is pretty good fun. The Final Sanction, probably my second favourite uh, David Pryor film. This one's got Robert Zadar with his big chin, as well as Ted Pryor. Really, really good fun one. And if I was going to pick one more AIP Studios film to put on DVD, it would be this one, Final Sanction. Next one we got is Jungle Assault. Uh, kind of similar to Kill Zone. Uh, it's pretty good fun. Need to watch this one again. Uh, I've got the Japanese tape as well. And we've got White. Fury. This one I remember being fairly average. Two sadistic killers, one chance for survival, and it involves snowboarding, so there you go. Uh, Rage to Kill, an island paradise rocked by fierce revolution. Another I've got on Japanese tape as well. Oliver Reed, uh, pretty decent from memory. This one was really quite interesting. Lock and Load, Unstoppable, Unpredictable, The Ultimate Destroyer. Uh, it's about Vietnam vets that get reprogrammed through a phone call that makes them uh, deadly assassins when they hear a trigger word. Um, and uh, yeah, it's actually kind of a police procedural without the police. It's it's interesting, lock and load. And uh, the next one we got here is Born Killer, not directed, I think, by David Pryor, at least not officially. It's officially uh, directed by Kimberly Casey. But man, that's Ted Pryor, and this art is amazing. He is coming out of his own mouth. Like, he is his own nose. Absolutely mental. It's an it's an okay film. I'm, I'm kind of not sold on Ted being the bad guy. I like him being the hero, but still, good fun. And uh, these ones are not David Pryor films. This is Tough Cop. Uh, another shot in the Philippines action film, which is really, really, really good fun. Um, fantastic art on this one as well, with Rom Kristoff. He's in so many of these good films. And the last one on this shelf is Night Force. This one is starring Linda Blair. She did quite a few 80s action films that are all quite B-grade, but still quite good fun to watch. The first one I'm going to take a look at here is STAB, Special Tactical Airborne Brigade. Um, 
I remember this being quite sleazy. The roughest, toughest, dirtiest fighting machine ever to snatch a billion. Wow. Yeah, and a very rare tape too. Um, oh yeah, I, I didn't mention the uh, satisfying squeak that this thing's got. Anyway, look who's toxic. This thing is hilarious. Never recycle what you don't want to come back. B grade horror. It's actually less comedy than you think with a title like that. Um, it feels like a trauma film. Good fun. I love Space Chase. This is ridiculous low budget Star Wars ripoff that nobody knows about. Directed by uh, Lebanese director Nick uh, Kamaz. Um, as far as I know, did two films. I've got them both. But Space Chase is the highlight. Completely ridiculous. Um, it, you can't even imagine how low budget this Star Wars ripoff is, but it is so, so much fun. The, um, the equivalent of uh, Chewbacca is a chameleon, and every time he's in a different scene, he's a different color because he changes color. Like, it's just brilliant. Um, the next one, uh, another Nick Kamaz. This is Rage of Vengeance. This was really hard to find. This is a Korean tape. Um, incredibly low budget um, revenge action film uh, with some pretty big explosions. So it's actually really good fun uh, and very rare. I actually put the IMDb entry in for that. That's how rare it is. Uh, Special Silences, fantastic. I think this is an Indonesian film. Um, ridiculous movie about um, a wizard that has magic pills that when somebody swallows a tree grows out of their stomach. You heard it here first. Fantastic stuff. Look at that guy. Tree growing out of his stomach. Yeah, just amazing and a very rare Dutch tape. Um, also incredibly rare um, Hong Kong Ocean Shores video here of Brutal Sorcery. Um, the only known version that has uh, English subtitles and the Cantonese audio. And I've never seen anybody uh, show this before, so very rare. Lots of fun film, Brutal Sorcery. We got uh, Mission Terminate, which uh, has Richard Norton there on the cover with a big gun. Can't remember the other name it's got, but it's got another name as well. Uh, this is good fun. Low, low, ultra low budget horror here, Evil Alter. One of the first X rentals I ever bought back in the mid 90s. I think this is a load of fun. Um, it's incredibly cheap. It's got Robert Zadar, but you know, it's it's loads of fun. Evil Alter, fantastic. Demon Warp. This is legitimately a title that Vinegar Syndrome should have put on Blu-ray already. Not sure what's going on. Um, backwards horror that has a very strange third act. Uh, that's all I want to say about that. But yep, fantastic. Demon Warp. And this, this is a proper film. This is Bells also called Murder by Phone. Um, fantastic, I watch this at least annually and it desperately needs a Blu-ray. Um, the idea of this film is um, people receiving phone calls that when they pick up the phone it makes a beeping sound and then they get glued to the phone, their nose bleeds, their head explodes. It's fantastic bells. Uh, you want this edition, you don't want the American tape called Murder by Phone as it's 15 minutes shorter. Bells. Uh, onto some Serio Santiago films here. Killer Instinct with um, a very young Robert Patrick. He did a few films in the Philippines. Good fun one here, Killer Instinct. Um, yeah, needs a DVD. Fast Gun, very underrated Serio film. Um, has a fantastic... Uh, Helicopter explosion at the end. Um, definitely worth the price of entry. Fast gun. Uh, the Retaliator. She is a female Terminator. This film's, film's pretty decent. It's got Robert Ginty in it. Um, it's a little bit silly, but you know, it's got Robert Ginty, so what do you expect? Retaliator. This one I actually don't recall much about. I may not have actually watched it yet. I just thought the cover was cool. Eagle Island. Soviets invade a US military post. I mean, it sounds pretty straightforward, but uh, yeah, haven't, I, don't, I don't recall actually watching that. Uh, the same with Dog Tags. This is one I've been meaning to check out. Just hasn't entered the machine. It certainly should have with that cover, Dog Tags. And on that theme as well of films I've not checked out, Blood Rage. Um, I think this is a 1980 film, maybe 79. Um, really cool cover art on this one. And... Um, it's from the director of um, Missing in Action, so yeah, I, I'm expecting it to be pretty good 
film. I just haven't checked it out. The Instructor, uh, sort of a, it's a American martial arts film with, um, you know, token uh, uh, Asian stars, uh, very 80s. Doesn't look anything like that cover, but the cover is very cool, old KTEL tape. Onto the third shelf, the first one we got here is Dead Man Walking, which is actually really uh, fun and very unknown film. It's got uh, Wingshauser, Brian James, and uh, Leland Crook is in this. Um, and it's also got um, uh, Jeffrey Combs, you can see there on the front. And uh, yeah, obviously these names here at the bottom are uh, on the wrong people, except for Wings, Wings is correct. Um, but this was lots of fun. Definitely worth checking this one out. I don't think there's a DVD. Um, it's post-apocalyptic future, future world movie with viruses taken over and um, desolate wastelands and all that kind of stuff. Good fun. Dead man walking. We've got uh, Hitman, Killing Machine, No One Could Stop. Uh, Chris Mitchin, John Philip Law. This one was pretty good from memory. Been a while on this one. Just typical low-budget jungle hut exploitation film. These two are great. Uh, jungle Wolf. Uh, which pretty much gives you what you see on the cover, but then is followed with Jungle Wolf 2 Return Fire Which this one was superior. Uh, they left him to die in the jungle and now he's back to wage war on the city streets With Ron Marcini and Adam West. This is really good fun. There's a US tape as well. Um, no DVD, but yeah, really good Recommend that one and oh boy here comes the double act We've got Dragon Hunt with the twin dragons here Followed by the sequel, I believe it's the sequel, not the other way around, Twin Dragon Encounter. I mean, just look at these guys. Look at those mustaches. Martin and Michael McNamara giving you the low-budget martial arts that you expect from people with those mustaches. Fun, fun on the bun. The next one here is Spider, another Sirio Santiago film. And I think this is also... Um, is it... Uh, Behind Enemy Lines 3 or something along those lines. I can't remember that. Uh, Eye of the Eagle. There you go. Eye of the Eagle. I think it's uh, part 3 in that series. Uh, A.K.A. Spider. Um, see if I'm correct about that. But it is definitely a Sirio Santiago film. And it was quite fun. This one's great. Uh, Fireback with Richard Harrison. And um, yeah. Just it's a big Jim Gaines is in this one as well. Lots of, lots of explosion in this. There's Richard Harrison there with his giant gun. Good fun and typical of the, uh, you know, the 80s Philippine jungle exploitation films. Here's more Lund Linda Blair and Sam Jones, the Silent Assassins. Complete lie of a cover. Uh, Linda Blair has a very small role as Sam Jones' girlfriend and she never holds a gun once and she is not menacing. Uh, she is the wimpy girl that um, just wants Sam to come home and she'll cook him lunch and like it's her role is pretty terrible but um, the film itself is quite fun Silent Assassins here's some low-budget uh, PM entertainment this is uh, LA uh, sorry not LA Heat Street um, yeah <laughs> this is exactly what you want from a PM entertainment film um, actually this might even predate PM this could be a City Lights it's uh, pretty low budget and um, it gives you what you want from uh, a, um, a Joseph uh, Mehi film. So yeah, good, solid, low budget action there. Uh, this one I haven't checked out, Eyes of the Condor. I picked this one up because the cover was amazing. So I should check that out at some point. This one's pretty good, High Riders. Very rare tape, this one. High energy adventure and high powered action. Rated R, and I don't remember why it was rated R, because I don't think it deserved it, but um, anyway, it gives you what you want for high energy adventure. This one's pretty terrible, but it's enjoyable in a terrible way. Warlords 3000, a uh, very low budget post-apocalyptic film. Um, very unknown, I'm not too sure what releases there are for this, but in the tradition of Mad Max, only by the bare essentials. Uh, another good Sirio Santiago here. This is Silk 2, which is far, far superior to the first Silk. Um, yeah, much, much better. And check out that colour. Yeah. Kickboxing heads or busting beds. Silk goes all the way. Great, great film. Uh, Phantom Raiders. This is a, um, a Teddy Page action film from memory with Miles O'Keefe. Really, really good cover on this one. And uh, lots of fun action as well. Yeah, got the Japanese tape as well. There is a DVD, but it's just a um, 
full screen sort of bootleggy type thing. Get the Terrorists. Also another one I got on Japanese tape, but man that cover. He's an angry gangry guy. More Philippines action. Gives you what you want. Explosions and big guns. And the last one, which is one I also have not checked out. This is French Quarter. Life or Death Choice is a deadly mission. The action thriller of the year. I highly, highly doubt that. Onto the fourth shelf here, and we're going to start with Caged Fury. Bit of a uh, women in prison film and uh, fairly sleazy from memory. Um, is this a serious anti arc? I think it might be from memory. And this tape is like the case is held together by uh, a will and a prayer only. These old K Tel cases are very renowned for falling to bits. I don't even want to try and open it at this point with one hand. But there you go. Put that very delicately back in there. Here's some more fun action. This is Counter Force. Definitely one of those ones that should have been on DVD at least a very long time ago, but I can't find any evidence that there was one. Um, just sort of a, you know, 80s uh, mid-budget action um, with um, George Kennedy, as you can see there at the top. Uh, he was in quite a few films at this time. And Isaac Hayes also, as you can see there on the cover. So it's, it's definitely a film that you'd have expected to be on DVD by now. I'm not sure why it's not. Counterforce, fun action. Ah, good old Thunder with uh, Mark Gregory who has simply vanished from the mists of time. Nobody can locate Mark Gregory. Um, he did three of these Thunder films and just vanished. Uh, it's got Bo Svensson as well um, and it's directed by Larry Ludman. The art on this one is spectacular. Proper classic painted artwork. Absolutely love it. And um, yeah, it's, it's yeah, your, your cheap Rambo clone. It's great, great fun. Thunder. Next one's a British tape, and one I've been meaning to check out, I haven't put this in yet. Um, Space Island, quite a rare film to find, the lenticular cover as well, which is very nice. Um, and it's uh, directed by Antonio Margheriti, which is why I'm very keen to check it out. Um, with Ernest Borgnine, who's there doing his Ernest -y face. And some very cool um, drawn artwork there in the middle. I like how the photo of Ernest Borgnine there is like a mirror of his cartoon version. Good fun, um, but yeah, haven't checked out Space Island. I, I hear it should be um, a decent watch, so I should pop that in soon. Uh, the sequel to Lion Man, this is The Witch Queen. Nowhere near as entertaining as the first film, uh, it doesn't even have the same stars in it. But um, look, it's still entertaining on its own right. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're going to watch One Lion Man, make sure it's the first one, also known as Sword and the Claw. Um, I like how it's got the old new release Prestige video sticker, so that's really nice. Nice tape to have. Um, Circle Man. Um, I don't think I've actually chucked this one on. It stars Vernon Wells, who's Australian, so I really should chuck this one on. But it looks pretty much, um, you know, pit fighting, force, force to fight film. This guy's got some... Uh, Wolverine type things going on there in his uh, hand so yeah I should probably uh, bump Circle Man up the queue it does look uh, very entertaining um, this one was not so entertaining this is Apocalypse Mercenaries in fact it was pretty boring um, which was a real shame uh, it's uh, yeah it's it's a jungle film it's just not that exciting really quite a bore um, I believe it was Italian and uh, yeah just lots of periods of not much going on uh, this one's way more exciting cross mission which i just learned the other day has a taiwanese laser disc which i would love to get but that'll be very hard so i've got um the australian tape and the american tape but um yeah absolutely fantastic artwork this is up there with the equalizer 2000 artwork good fun good fun 80s gun fu action there and what a set of memories that he's got anyway um yeah fun one cross mission next one here very very low budget and nobody knows about this one singapore harbor usa welcome to the crime capital of america uh not exactly a brilliant film in the tradition of beverly hills cop i mean no no it's not from 1988 it got a release here on virgin vhs um which is pretty surprising really being a fairly large label I don't know how they even found this thing. Um, it's, I don't know what other releases worldwide it's got. But anyway, it's okay action, but um, yeah, it could have been far better. 
And the next one is mammothly appalling. This is 2002, The Rape of Eden. One of the worst post-apocalyptic films that you're going to see. You need to watch it at least once, but man, it's just a big bore, unfortunately. Um, just a big bore. It's got a few decent scenes, but yeah, pretty average. Uh, this one I haven't checked out, actually. This is Beyond the Kilimanjaro. Um, which you got Richard Hatch and Daniel Green, which is why I picked it up. James Mitchum as well. Um, and it might have been an Antonio Margheriti as well. I cannot recall, but um, yeah, I, I like picking up Daniel Green films. The same way is why I picked up uh, Condor, which one, this one was actually a pretty entertaining uh, Daniel Green film. I like the cover on that as well. Uh, again, I don't think either of these are on DVD. This one's got Charles Napier. He's always good fun. Uh, yes, directed by Martin Dolman, so there you go, I was right. Uh, and AKA there for Antonio Margheriti, I believe. And um, yeah, there you go, Condor. And this is a British tape, which I would love to get the Japanese one of, um, because this film is mental um, and exactly the kind of thing that Severin should put on the Blu ray. The Exorcist 3, better known as Cries and Shadows. Nothing to do with the Exorcist films, of course, that's just. Uh, smoke and mirrors but cries and shadows fantastic italian um exorcist ripoff look at this stuff look at this stuff it is loads of fun a film you will never forget that's absolutely right um yeah just make it your mission to check out cries and shadows uh, it's a crime that it is not on blu-ray definitely as i said something that uh you'd expect severin to put out by now Next one here is Robert Ginty's The Bounty Hunter, uh, another AIP film, so um, the uh, Priors would have been involved at some point, and um, yeah, Fritz Matthews, heavily involved in AIP films, Bounty Hunter. Um, I don't recall much about this one at all, actually. Uh, it's got Bo Hopkins in it, and uh, that's a pretty good explosion there, so I should probably check this one out again, if not for the first time, I just don't remember. Uh, the next one we're checking out here is uh, Forgotten Warrior. Um, before Rambo stalked the war-torn jungle, there was the Forgotten Warrior uh, with Ron Marchini in this film. It's uh, It was okay from memory. I think it was also shot in the Philippines. Um, but uh, nothing that stuck with me as being awesome. So um, I should probably check it out again. But I love that cover. And that's why it's been on the uh, carousel. Two more to go on this shelf. We have Serpent Warriors. Supernatural becomes reality. Um, with, uh, yeah, Chris Mitchum again and um, lots of snakes, pretty much. Um, yeah, I believe this one was entertaining when I watched it, but that was well over a decade ago, so I'm due to rewatch Serpent Warriors. Awesome cover. And this one is fantastic. Richard Norton in Blood Street. It's also got Leo Fong. It really is a Leo Fong film. Um, it is really, uh, you could consider it a second, a sequel to Low Blow. Um, I believe Leo Fong is playing the same private eye as he played in uh, Low Blow. So yeah, I'd call this a sequel, Blood Street, Low Blow 2 perhaps. So yeah, Richard Norton playing the bad guy, Leo Fong playing the good guy. And whoops, there's some memories. Thanks for the memories, Blood Street. And onto the last shelf of the carousel, the first film we're going to check out here is Triple Cross with Cynthia Rothrock. I love myself some Cynthia Rothrock. Um, I think this was an early 90s one when she was doing some uh, Indonesian films. Um, and I watched this only about a month ago. Um, and yeah, this was this is really entertaining, this one. Um, it's all about a... She's like an FBI agent, I think, and was um, trying to protect some kind of computer equipment that was trying to get stolen by a bunch of different bad uh, actors as they would say um, and yeah she's on top form in this film not one of her best but it's still entertaining triple cross uh, the next one I don't remember too much about the game uh, in fact have I watched the game I may not have watched the game but I think it's uh yeah there you go the rich and powerful ruthless once a year come together to play a deadly game of seek and destroy no I I have seen this I got it because it was basically um, another Deadly Prey style film, so yes, I did watch the game, and I remember it being pretty good. Those uh, those images are coming back to me. Um, yeah, definitely one that I need to watch again, because I remember being entertained by it. 
these two films are excellent. Well, at least the first one's excellent. Um, Indio uh, with marvelous Marvin Hagler and Brian Dennehy, um, but Francesco Quinn is the uh, main star in this film. Indio, the environmental warrior, uh, and Anthony Dawson there, so Antonio Margheriti. Um, this is such a good uh, 80s action film. I have absolutely no idea why this doesn't have any proper release. Um, but I know there is a laser disc of it as well um, because I have a lovely Blu-ray, custom Blu-ray archive of both these films from Laserdisc um, and they look fantastic in the archive that I've got but it would be very very nice to get proper widescreen films of Indio and Indio 2. Um, yeah so Indio 2 not as good as the first one, Oop, doesn't want to come out but still entertaining, has more of a focus on uh, Marvelous Marvin Hagler in this film who realises that he did wrong in the first film and is now on the side of the Indio. Um, so yeah, entertaining but just not as good as the first film. So there you go. Try and get that one back in. This one I've yet to see because the tape won't play, it's just completely stuffed. The cover's amazing. Crime Zone. David Carradine. God is dead and hell still exists. I tried to play it and um, it was just a, a bunch of rolling vertical lines. It was not going to happen. Um, yeah, on Concord, so uh, Roger Corman put this one together and I don't think he did a DVD of it, which is surprising. Uh, there's DVDs of pretty much every Concord film, but uh, Crime Zone, for some reason, has missed out on that boat. Hunters of the Golden Cobra. Watched this one a long time ago. Um, another Margareti film. And... Um, yeah, this is his Raiders of the Lost Ark ripoff, and is quite entertaining if you take into account that it is uh, the Italians ripping off um, Indiana Jones yet again. But uh, in its own right, good fun, Hunters of the Golden Cobra. Uh, this one I remember being pretty average, Sword of the Barbarians. Fantastic drawing on the cover though. Um, uh, obviously this, this falls in with your um, Sword and the Sorcerer kind of film. And um, it was all right, I think, but uh, I don't remember a great deal about it to make it uh, stand apart from a lot of the uh, low-budget versions that were at the time, Sword of the Barbarians. Uh, David Hevener in Kill Crazy. Man. <laughs> We're going to talk about low-budget action. David Hevener films. He's done a few. Um, but, uh, yeah, this was uh, Vietnam War veterans and taking on white supremacists. Um, and David Hevener wrote and directed and starred in the film, so there you go. Kill Crazy. I do enjoy his films, I've got to say. I've got a couple of them. Um, some have made it to DVD in some capacity. Uh, Field of Fire with David Carradine. I remember being vaguely entertaining, but not being too outstanding. But the cover was fantastic, and it's a Serio Santiago, so I had to have it. Um, definitely I should re-watch it to see if I was being hard on it at the time. This one is awesome and really should be on some kind of Blu-ray release by now, Wheels of Terror. Um, this is, you know, your possessed car kind of film. Really, really good. Um, I think it was made for TV, but uh, yeah, very surprising that this has not had any kind of digital release, Wheels of Terror. Probably the most low budget fantasy film I've ever seen, Avalon, Land of Magic. Um, Wow, it's just a step above being filmed by um, students in the backyard. Um, the costumes are so cheap, but you watch it for laughs, you get a few beers, and um, yeah, Avalon, you, you can't beat it. You just need to know what you're watching. Uh, Soldier's Revenge. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. I've checked out Soldier's Revenge, but you know, that giant gun meant it had to go on this rack. So there you go, Soldier's Revenge, um, Vietnam, Vietnam War uh, film. Maybe shot in the Philippines, probably explain why I bought it. Uh, Booby Trap, which has a different name in America that's uh, escaping me right now. Um, the 80s sci-fi action film, um, 1998 apparently being the future, where, you know, post-apocalyptic stuff. Uh, pretty good, I remember this one being. Um, yeah, about a guy that... Um, Sets booby traps around the neighborhood to kill gang members. Fantastic drawn cover art on this one. 
Uh, this one is probably the weirdest post-apoc film I've ever seen, Survivor. Um, it is not at all an action film. It's actually, the whole thing is basically a monologue um, and a very slow burn. Um, it's, it's, it's almost a bit like a uh, you know, last man alive kind of thing um, with so much of the dialogue just being read by the narrator. Um, interesting, but not what you expect, uh, Survivor. Now this, this was a fun one. Out of the body, check out that cover art. Beautiful hand-drawn painting on this one. Um, and uh, it is a very lesser-known Brian Trenchard Smith film, which is uh, why I picked it up. Um, yeah, sort of like Patrick is, I guess, the best thing to compare it to. And uh, yeah, no digital release out of the body. Bit of a crime, should have one. Uh, Children of the Night, we're under the second last film here. This is a uh, Fangoria made vampire film and I remember it being pretty good fun in that Fangoria early 90s fashion. So yeah, pretty cool. Don't think there was any digital release. And the last one, saving some of the best for last, is Alter Max Force, the first Ninja Commandos. Um, if you like Raw Force, you're going to like Alter Max Force. That's, that's how I look at this. Um, Reading from the back here, a group of commandos force combining their skills of a ninja warrior with US commando training deep into Vietnamese territory, liberate a POW camp run by a sadistic colonel who has mercilessly slaughtered his prisoners in a display of rabid madness butchery. A challenge for them is the ultimate maximum. <laughs> uh, Ultimax Force. Gotta love it. Fantastic cover. No DVD release, and it really should have one. And that's my VHS carousel. I hope you enjoyed going for that spin with me. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. And checking out some of those cool covers and cool movies. Uh, let me know what you think about the tapes you saw. And if there's any of these movies that you've seen yourself, do let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and see you next time.